You are listening to Catholic Family Podcast. The Young Man's Guide. The Sword of Respect for Authority. 30. Honor thy father and thy mother. Of what continual sacrifices is parental love capable? What is it which turns the hair of the father of a family prematurely gray? What imprints wrinkles on his brow? What causes the once vigorous and stalwart frame to be bent and broken before its time? It is the wearing care and anxiety for the temporal happiness and well-being of his beloved children. Then ask your mother what cruel anguish she endured for your sake, how many hours she watched beside your cradle, how much anxiety she has felt on your account. Truly, new every morning is the love a tender mother's heart can prove. Maternal love. Eight years ago, a cadet, 17 years of age, from the military school at Vienna, slipped from the Tronstein in so unfortunate a manner that he fell into the lake of Gemendun, which lies directly beneath, and there found a watery grave. Every effort to recover the body proved to be without result. Year by year, on All Souls' Day, a lady, bowed down with grief, arrives at Gemenden. She is the mother of the poor drowned lad, and she causes herself to be rowed out into the middle of the lake, to the spot where the water swallowed up her darling son. There, as a token of her unchanging affection, she drops into the lake a wreath composed of the choicest flowers. Honor your father and mother. Honor them by invariably speaking in a respectful manner to them and of them, by never allowing an insolent or unbecoming expression to pass your lips in regard to them, and by never permitting yourself to make any natural or moral imperfections they may chance to possess the subject of a jest. Let your whole external demeanor give evidence of your respect for your father and mother. Even if clouds obscure the sun, I mean if real and manifest faults on the part of your parents lessen the brightness of their dignity, search for and behold the sun through the clouds, namely in spite of your parents' failings. Remember their position of authority. God did not say in the fourth commandment, Honor a good father and a good mother, but simply honor thy father and thy mother. In the preceding chapter, I quoted an example of childlike respect for parents, which was afforded by an official in a very high position. I will now give you another example. The blessed Thomas More, the Chancellor of England, and consequently the highest personage in the realm after the king, kept his aged father always with him in his own house, and invariably gave him the place of honor. Nor did he ever go from home in order to attend to the business of the state without first asking on his knees for his father's blessing and kissing the old man's hand. Again I say, love your father and mother, honor them both in heart and deed. Prove your dutiful affection by never causing grief to your parents, but by being always to them a source of satisfaction. Imitate in this way the youthful Tobias, who was called by his aged parents, the light of our eyes, the staff of our old age, the comfort of our life, the hope of our posterity. Show your filial love, especially by supporting your parents with the most tender devotedness and the utmost generosity in sickness and in old age. Give proof of your filial affection, also by praying daily and fervently for your parents. Truly the prayer of a good son for his father and mother is certain to pierce the clouds and gain a hearing, exercising, as it does, a holy compulsion in regard to God. Once more I admonish you, obey your parents, remember how Jesus himself was subject to Mary and Joseph until he was thirty years of age. He obeyed them. How shameful it is to hear lads who are fifteen 17 or 20 years of age say, I am no longer a child. It is time to cast off leading strings. Alas, alas, I am no longer a child. 
Such a one is too entirely right. He is no longer a child of God, a child according to the sacred heart of Jesus, but a child of pride. My dear young man, even should you have attained the age of twenty or thirty years, preserve and give proof of a real childlike affection for your father and mother. And if perchance your parents sleep in God's acre, the best way to remember and to honor them will be to lead an upright and honorable life. If ever in a distant land, amid suffering and affliction and a hard struggle for existence, you miss the kind parents who have been long sleeping in the grave, remember that even then you are not an orphan. Has not Christ himself taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven? In this world the sons of men are beloved by parents twain. God is one alone, yet when parents forsake, he will remain.